And we are joined now by John Harper and John Jastrzemski for some table talk, guys. I'm excited for this <laughs> one. And Harp, I want to start with you because you were all over this on Wednesday night, less than 24 hours after that blown save we saw from Edwin Diaz. What did you see in him coming in and slamming the door shut like this? On yeah, Thursday? it was impressive, Erica, because we've seen him lose his confidence in the past. Even earlier this year, they took him out of the closers role. He lost his confidence. So for him to bounce back the way he did, and he, you heard Lindor say it, he trusted his stuff and he attacked with his fastball. I think it was 17 out of 18 pitches. Only one slider of all fastballs. That's what he needs to do. He, he, you know, he's down a little bit from compared to 22, but he's still got a good fastball. He did work on his mechanics before the game, which, you know, kudos to him for making the effort. And he, he could see he had more command of the fastball. But to me, it's all about him with his confidence attacking, going after hitters. And he basically blew the Diamondbacks away, which was what a turnaround from the night and, and the Sunday game when he gave up the home run on a slider there. He Sometimes he falls in love with that slider. I think he doesn't trust the fastball, but he trusted it today. Huge, huge performance for him. Monstrous, because you think about how that game is taking shape. You get brilliant start yet again from David Peterson. Yeah. Iglesias gives you the go-ahead hit in the ninth inning, and I'm sure the thought in every single Met fan's mind is, oh boy, here we go again. Are we going to have a repeat? Is it going to be deja vu of 24 hours ago? And it wasn't. That's a credit to Edwin Diaz. Now, I can't get nuts, though, with Diaz because there have been a couple of instances this year where I have kind of felt like, oh, he's figured it out. He's mm. going to get back to 2022 Edwin Diaz form, and it hasn't happened. So I think the reality is for Diaz over this final month of the year, he's got to string them together. Yeah. They cannot be flushing games down the toilet when you're trying to go right. and make the postseason you can't be giving games away the way they did on Wednesday night Erica so hopefully this is a major turning point for him he's got to build upon it but I need to see like five six seven good outings in a row before my confidence is all the way back to where it's been in the past sure so let's build off of that talk big picture with this Mets team these past three series it seemed like they're potentially make or break for their playoff hopes overall and you're talking about trying to squeeze in we see where they are with uh, the Braves of course they ended up taking two of three from both the Orioles and D-backs and then split with the Padres. So what's your sense of maybe encouragement right now that you're feeling despite those saves, that uh, blown saves that we we're talking about? So it's complicated because if you would have told me before the start of that stretch, you take two or three from Baltimore, you go and split with the Padres, <laughs> right? you take two or three with the Diamondbacks, you'd say, wow, amazing. The Mets played brilliantly. <laughs> the problem is, and I know the Atlanta Braves lost on Thursday night, yeah. They didn't gain ground in the wild card right. race. Mm -hmm. They ended up losing ground. Now, the good news is you're playing a historically bad baseball team in the Chicago White Sox Friday, Saturday, Sunday. No excuses. You can't lose one of these games. You got to go and sweep this series. You cannot give games away, Harp. I can't say my confidence is drastically different from where it was a few weeks ago. I, I give the Mets credit for playing well in this stretch, but – we're running out of baseball. Yeah, That's what it boils down to. That's why I'm not yeah. maybe as pom-pom waving as I would have been thinking what that stretch was and how the Mets played yeah, in that stretch. But you might might have been if it was 6-1 and one in San Diego and, and Arizona, which is, you know, it was all about the bullpen. Otherwise, right. they go 6-1 and one there, and you're like, whoa. You know, I mean, so they are playing well. They're playing good baseball. The bullpen is the issue, and if they can get that figured out, Buto looked good today, so maybe he's back on the right track. Uh, obviously, losing Nunez to me is a big blow. But they, they're they playing well again, but that's kind of been their story all year. They play up and down to their competition. So you saw a lot of energy, a lot of intensity in these series against – Oh, a lot, all these series, Orioles, Padres, and Diamondbacks. But now you go going to Chicago, there's going to be no energy in that ballpark, yeah. no fans. you gotta, you got to generate your own energy, your own uh, charisma, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. And you gotta, they got to sweep. There's no excuse. you got to sweep the White Sox. They're in a stage where they're chasing the Braves, chasing everybody in a wild card. you got to go in and sweep this team. They're historically bad. Two out of three is not good enough.